We're at a place in our lives. We're tired of all the lies and the pain we feel inside. We want to make it right. I have nothing else to give except my life. Please accept my offering. I'm running back to you. I gave you my life. Don't need to be emotional. Sometimes I cry. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good morning, welcome. Good morning, God bless you. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. You've forgiven us, Lord, and you do it daily. I don't want to take advantage of love and the sacrifice you make. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody go ahead and begin to share as you join. Hallelujah. Somebody go ahead and begin to share. Whatever it is, go ahead and begin to share. Jesus, somebody go ahead and share. I'm running back to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Sometimes we mess up and we have to run back to him because we were disobedient. Hallelujah. Jesus. Somebody go ahead and begin to worship. Somebody go ahead and share. Share the broadcast, people of God. Yes, share it. Yes, Sister Alicia. Yes, my my yes, my brother Wilfred. Share it. Hallelujah. Yes, Sister Denise. Share it. People of God, go ahead and begin to share the broadcast. We're going into prayer. Welcome, welcome. Good morning. Happy Thursday, everyone. As you join, hallelujah. Somebody said, I feel so good this morning. Welcome. God bless you. Hallelujah. I pray the, bless, the message bless your spirit. I pray this morning that the message straighten some things out. This message that is about to come. My God. Lord, we thank you for another day that you have given us. You said, this is the day you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Jesus, my God. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy upon our life. We thank you, Lord, Heavenly Father, this morning. Many people are still sleeping and we are up. And it's not because they want to sleep, but because they're on strong medication. So this morning we give great, we give thanks and, and yes, we give glory to God Almighty because he is good to us. We are in our right mind. We are in our right mind. We wake up this morning in our right mind to make fear decisions. So let's go, somebody go ahead and give him praise. Somebody go ahead and praise him. Somebody go ahead and magnify him. Hallelujah. Somebody go ahead and let us just love on him. He is so amazing. It doesn't matter what we do. He is always there for us. Sometimes we mess up. And God never changes his mind concerning us. He's waiting to say, come my child. He's waiting for us to call on him. He will never impose on you. He is a gentleman. God is a gentleman. He's waiting on you, patiently waiting on you to call him. He's waiting on you to call him. He said, come unto me, all those that are tired, all those that are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come to me. I will give you rest. Jesus. It doesn't matter what nobody say. At the end of the day, he loves you. 
he loves you in spite of your flaws, in spite of what you did, in spite of what you're going through, God loves you. I came here today to tell you this thing, Jim Brown. I came here to tell you this one thing. At the end of the day, he loves you. Let us just show love. Let us just love on him now. Don't wait until you receive a big portion of anything at all. Just love on him now. In spite of what you're going through, let us love on him now. Don't wait for something big to happen. The Bible reminds us that in all things, give praises to God Almighty. Don't wait for something great to happen. Don't wait for something spectacular to happen. Don't wait until you hear good news to give love, show love to God and give him praise. Don't wait. Don't wait until somebody offer you something to, to glorify God. Many people glorify God. Some even dance when they receive something. The Bible said when, when the Ark of the Covenant found rest, David danced until his jacket fell. I came to talk to somebody here this hour. The Ark of the Covenant didn't have any rest for over 70 something years in the beginning. And after David found it, when David became king, he went and got it and it couldn't find any rest. So when it eventually found rest, when God gave Israel rest with the Ark of the Covenant, Jesus, David danced, my God, the Bible said David danced until his wife got jealous. David danced for the Lord. It makes his wife jealous. And she was in rage. She began to curse him. My God and the Lord said she was punished because of what she did. That evil thing. And she never gave birth. Her punishment was she saw David worshiping God, dancing. He was pleased. His spirit man was happy because God already finalized the deal. The ark found rest. And his wife was jealous. Hallelujah. Hey, Jesus. His wife got jealous. And she despised him. The Bible says she despised her husband. Sometimes they will despise you because of the, the, the passion, because of your love for the Lord, because of your labor of love for the Lord. People will despise you because of how much you love God. All you talk about is Jesus. All you this, you're, you're just Jesus, Jesus. You, you, you're God this, you're God that. People get jealous of the passion, of the zeal that you carry for the Lord. Tell somebody, don't envy me for the zeal. Salvation is free. When God done so much for you, and you know, you cannot glorify man. You give God glory and honor daily because of his goodness, because of his grace and his mercy upon your life. Just imagine he was the king. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. But David was the king. And his wife despised him because of the zeal that he had for the Lord. When the ark find rest, remember the wife was the first king's daughter, Saul. The wife was King Saul's daughter. When Saul was a king, I don't know who the Lord is rubbing this morning, but when Saul was a king, he only mentioned the Ark of the Covenant one time because he was losing a fight. He was losing the battle. So he wanted that in his presence for protection because they know the Ark of the Covenant was their protection because God dwells there. My God. But he never went and got it. He only mentioned it one time. But David, as soon as David became king, he went and got it. He was sitting down for 70 something years. And when David became king, he went and got it. 
And the king's daughter, my God, despised the new king because he did something that no man in Israel has ever done. I come this morning to tell you, people of God, open your mouth and pray because your zeal for the Lord can bring jealousy. Your zeal for the Lord, your zeal for the Lord, it can cause jealousy. The way you love God, the passion you have for the things of God, it can cause people to envy you. It can cause your spouse because this was David's wife and she hated him that day because his jacket he wasn't ashamed to throw it away to dance it was it was spiritual people of god it was spiritual when the ark found rest it was spiritual not just anybody could do it david had to leave for 90 days and come back because of what uzziah died so he had to leave and go figure out a way how to move the ark. I came to talk to somebody here. Tell somebody, don't get jealous of you. Tell them real quick, don't get jealous of you. The ark found rest. And the king danced for the Lord. And his wife hated him. So you see, the jealousy in ministry has been going on for a long time. Before Jesus came to earth. Yes. Before Jesus came to earth, there was jealousy. When Jesus Christ came, it was still present. They killed John the Baptist because he spoke the truth. They killed him because he stood for the word of God. Let me share something with the people of God. The devil knows the truth. The devil knows the truth. Yes. I'm going somewhere with this message. Hallelujah. This message is going somewhere. So I encourage you to open your mouth and pray. Let us pray before we get into the word. My brothers and my sisters, the Lord have a word for us here today. Anything that is causing jealousy in your life. Today we come against every spirit of jealousy. It doesn't matter with who, family, friends, it don't matter. Today we bind and we destroy that spirit of jealousy that travels from generation to generation. My God, Jesus. Some people don't know because no one spend the time to talk to them about certain things. And therefore they disregard it because they're not aware. I came today to encourage your people of God. Look around you. Pay close attention to the things that's going on around you. God is not dead. God is not dead. Jesus Christ came in the flesh to represent God. God is not dead. He died and he arose on the third day. He walked with men. He's not dead. And then he ascended up into heaven. It's spiritual. He is not dead. The reason why some people are still struggling to believe because it's spiritual. It is spiritual. Tell somebody it is spiritual. God is not dead. The Bible reminds us God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is not dead. He's a spirit. Hell, Baba. He's a spirit. He broke bread after he came back from the dead. He's not dead. Some people are still contemplating because they don't have the knowledge. No one taught them the word of God. So they don't have an understanding. So they are still in the ministry and they are still in sin. God is not dead. He's watching. He said we will receive our reward. Whatever you do, you will receive your reward. Whatever you do, you will receive your reward. If you do good, you will receive your reward. Tell somebody, if you do bad, you will receive your reward. Whatever you do on this earth, you have a reward. 
there is a reward. I came to talk to somebody. There is a reward for whatever you do on earth, good or bad. He has something for us. Somebody go ahead and begin to share this word. Hallelujah. Yesterday, somebody was on Instagram saying, this broadcast, I learned so much. I'm still learning because each time I come here, I can only bring what the Lord placed in my spirit. So I am still learning as well. I allow the Lord to speak through me so I can also learn. This is to edify my God. This is to edify God's children. And I am still learning. I am not in my flesh. I set my flesh aside and said, flesh, you are under subjection to the Holy Spirit. So now he can use me to bless his people. All God is looking for is a vessel that is available. So if you have been called to ministry, I came today to tell you, push flesh aside and let God arise in you and your enemies will scatter. Push flesh aside and let God arise in you and your enemy will scatter. Tell somebody, relax yourself. Listen to me. Jealousy was from the days of old. Disobedience was from the days of old. It's not new. It's nothing new. The word of God was from the days of old. The Bible reminds us that even in before Samuel was born, the word of God was very rare. Yes, before Anna gave birth to Samuel, Samuel became a prophet. Remember, because she dedicated him and left him at the, at the tabernacle all his life. But before he was born, the word of God was rare. There were not many prophets. Nobody was hearing much from God because their lifestyle never pleased God. When your lifestyle, I don't know who the Lord is using me to talk to, but when your lifestyle pleased God, there has to be a change. There has to be a balance. When you live your life to please God, it's your lifestyle. When you live to please him, he will work in you. He will do a work in you. You will never be empty. You will never be dry. Hallelujah. Tell somebody, relax yourself. You will never be empty. You will never be dry. There are so many people watching right now that's not here with us. My sister Dawn Walters Good morning. Welcome, Jesus. Sister Marsha, welcome. God bless you. Hallelujah. Go ahead, people of God, and begin to share this broadcast. And don't share it with me, because I have it both ways. People on Instagram, share it. I just want you to know that the YouTube channel, I'm encouraging you to go and subscribe so we can go live from YouTube. We need to use up YouTube to our advantage. Whatever benefit that it comes with, we will use it to travel to bring the gospel. But I encourage you, let us share, subscribe, and use up YouTube to our advantage. This morning I went over there and I was looking. Not many people have subscribed. People have got, a lot of you are following me on Facebook, but the time is coming for me to get off of Facebook. So I encourage you, subscribe to the YouTube channel and allow the gospel to continue. Yes, Sister Marcia, tell them, relax yourself. It's been a long time people have been putting up and dealing with envy and jealousy. But the Bible reminds us that one, two will be in the bed and one will be taken. David's wife, she didn't really love him. She came to give him hell according to her father. David's wife came in his life to give him hell because she was just like her father. Hallelujah. Yes, it's in the Bible. When Yes, when he gave away the first wife and then he gave that woman to, to David, he said, okay, this one will fix you. So he couldn't kill David. So he tried to give David somebody just like himself. 
Somebody say, relax yourself. God had a plan. The woman was bitter because she came from a bitter weed. Hey, Jesus. The woman was bitter because she came from a bitter weed. I'm talking about Michael, David's wife. Michael. You see, this is why David had to find somebody who loved him. Hallelujah. David had to find somebody who loved him because the promise he cut some foreskins. David had to work for that woman. Yes. So when he became king, the first thing he said, bring me my wife. I pay for that woman. The dowry, the bride price. He had to cut off 400 foreskin of men to pay King Saul in order to marry one of his daughters. He was a wicked man. He was a wicked king. So God allowed him to die without this honor. They chop off his head and place it where idols were. People of God, I'm talking about the Bible here. When people do wicked and evil things, God allow this honor. Somebody said dead before this honor. He was dead and he was dishonored. <laughs> he was dishonored. But today we are going to dig into disobedience and jealousy. Hey, Jesus. If you're ready for the word of God, somebody said, I'm ready. If you're ready for the word of God, somebody said, I'm ready. <laughs> if you're ready for the word of God, if you're ready for the word of God, somebody said, I am ready. I am so ready. Because in the book of First Kings, chapter 13, it's so juicy. I, I sat here reading the word and I just begin to glorify God. Somebody said, if you're ready, hold on. <laughs> Somebody said, if you're ready, just grab tight to this rain because we're going to dig into the word of God. Hallelujah. And I'm here to let you know, listen to me, people of God. Salvation is sweet. So if you're here and you're not saved, it's time to give your life to the Lord because there are some benefits. Hallelujah. There are some benefits that comes with being a child of God. A lot of people are not saved, but they keep saying, no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. That's not how it works. The way it works when you have a relationship with God, when you are his, when you belong to him, when you are sold out for him, then you can say that because you are under a covenant. When you are under that covenant, that canopy of God, you can say, no weapon that is formed against me. If you're here and you're not saved, it's time to give your life to the Lord. So you can practice the scripture. So you can live your life to please God. So the scripture, yes, you can align your life with the word of God. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but I feel extra strength. I feel extra strength today. I don't know who the Lord sent me here to talk to, but I came this morning to encourage you. Share the word. People of God, share the word. We are going into. We are going to dig in. When you go to the breakfast table and you see buffet style, you dig in. You don't know which where to start. We're going to dig in in the book of First Kings. Chapter 13. Somebody grab your Bible. First Kings chapter 13. I encourage you, grab the Bible. Because we are digging in. We are going in. We are going in. Hallelujah. Yes. Today. If you're ready. Grab the book. You might be on Facebook. But grab your book. Your Bible. And your notebook. And if I were you. I would sit the phone down. And start writing. Because I'm going to give you something to write. First Kings chapter 13. May this word. Change your story. May this word bring forth obedience to your life. May this word, my God, may this word fix you. May this word shape you. Today we're going to talk about two prophets in the Bible. Bible in the book of 
1 Kings chapter 13, it says, At the Lord's command, a man of God from Judah went to Bethel. At the Lord's command. So the Lord commanded this man to go to Bethel. Arriving there, arriving there just as Jeroboam was approaching, my God, arriving there just as Jeroboam was approaching the altar to burn incense. Then at the Lord's command, he shouted, O altar, this is a man of God. And the king was going there to burn incense. So he went to the tabernacle. He was not a member of that church. He was not the pastor of that church. In today's generation, we call it church. Hallelujah. He shouted, O oh, altar, this is what the Lord said. A child named Josiah will be born into the dynasty of David. On you will on you he will sacrifice priests from the pagan shrine. My God, King James Version word it a whole different way. He will, yes, he will sacrifice priests. That means he will kill priests on the altar, chop off their head. Who will come here to burn incense and human bones will be burned on you. So he was speaking to the altar, to the actual object. The altar where they burn incense and do sacrifice. The man of God was speaking to it to tell the altar the things that's about to happen. But watch what God is going to do. Somebody go ahead and share this. Invite your friends. Invite your friends that are saved. Invite the ones that are not saved so they can come and hear the word of God. Tell them to come and hear the word of God. Okay, my sister, I understand. The Bible said, that same day, the man of God gave a sign to prove that his message is said. The Lord has promised to give this sign. This altar will split apart, oh Jesus, and its ashes will be poured out on the ground. When the king heard the man of God speaking against the altar at Bethel, he pointed at him and shouted, seize this man. But instantly, people of God, pay attention, instantly, when he stretched forth his hand to say, seize this man, he was paralyzed. The hand that was stretched forth to stop the kid, the man of God. But today I came to tell you, any hand that will be stretched forth to stop you, to hurt you, today we chop it off. Any hand that will stretch forth to order your debt or to put you in prison, today we chop it off. Jesus any hand, it doesn't matter what color hand, any hand that was sent to stop you, today we chop it off. Somebody said chop it off. Any hand, any hand, any hand that will stretch forth to put you in jail, because this is what he ordered. Jesus. The Bible said instantly the king became paralyzed in that position so his hand couldn't move. There were no movements. Hallelujah. His hand couldn't move. Somebody go ahead and begin to share this word. Bible said he couldn't pull his hand back. So his hand was in this position. He couldn't move it. It was stuck. It was frozen. Any hand, any hand, any hand that they send for you, any hand we chop it off. My God, any hand they send for you, we chop it off. My God, God bless you. Yes, you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Go ahead, people of God. So he couldn't pull his hand back. As at the same time, at the same time, a white crack appear in the altar at the same time the altar crack anybody hear the word at the same time any um, jesus 
his hand was stretched out and couldn't move. So you see, God was in motion. You see, that is the kind of power we pray to God for. No faith. It's a no blessing. It was a no breakthrough. It was a right now miracle. My God. The Bible said the altar crack. There was at the same time a wide, that means it was separated. A wide, at the same time, Jesus, a wide crack appeared in the altar and the ashes pour out. So you know the altar, they burn incense all the time on there and all kind of stuff that they burn. So the ashes begin to pour out. Just as the man of God predicted in the message from the Lord. Hey, see, a crack came and the altar opened up. Jo and, and, the, and the king hand in one same position like a statue. You see, God turned him into a statue. He was still breathing, but his hand couldn't move. Any hand that they will send to do anything to you. Jesus, we chop it off. Right now. God bless you. Welcome. The Bible said the king cried out to the man of God. And said, please. Ask the Lord your God to restore my hand again. So the man of God prayed. So you see, the man of God was now obedient. The man of God prayed. So the man of God prayed to the Lord, and the king's hand was restored, and he could move it again. Let me, let me tell you something. Don't play with God's anointed. God sent him with a message. People of God, when you see God's messenger out there giving message, either you listen or you keep moving, but don't trouble them. Don't trouble Zion. Tell somebody, don't trouble Zion. Don't trouble God chosen. Don't trouble God's anointed. Do his prophets no harm. He was sending his men that work with him. He was the king. He was the reigning king, but he didn't respect the man of God. He didn't have any respect for the word of God because the man of God came with the word of God and he wanted them to arrest him. So look what God did. God frees his hand. So he asked the king now and the altar right there. Immediately the prophecy came to pass. The altar cracked open. And the ashes begin to pour out. So it was now useless. Hey, Jesus. May the enemy and his plans become useless. May anything that they did to stop you become useless. It goes to naught. We nullify it now. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Anything that they said about you, it will come to nothing. We send confusion to the enemy's camp. Hallelujah. We send confusion to the enemy's camp right now in the name of Jesus. Those that have conspired against you. Ah, I came to talk to you today. This was the prophet doing the work of God. But the king wanted them to put him in jail. And God step in. So God is about to step into your situation and stop those evil plans of the enemy. Hallelujah. Tell them, don't touch God's anointed. Don't try it. This is why, you see, prophets don't walk around with guns because God protect them. They're gone. This is the gun, the sword. What is the sword? The word of God. Yes, God protect his own. Don't trouble them. If you don't like them, that's okay. But don't trouble them. Let God deal with them. The Bible said, he recovered his hands. Now it could move again. Then the king said to the man of God, come to the palace with me and have something to eat and I will give you a gift. No, he's trying to buy him out. But that's not what God said. But the man of God said, 
to the king, even if you give me half of everything you own, I would not go with you. Anybody remember Balaam and Balak? Balak Balaam, the man of God said to the king Balak, even if you give me your palace filled with silver and gold, I cannot do what God said I shouldn't do. So you see, this was obedience to this point. Anybody here listening? To this point, he was obedient. He said, even if you give me, even if you give me half of everything you own as a king, I still cannot come with you. I would not eat or drink anything in this place. For the Lord gave me command, you must not eat anything while you are there and do, and do not return to Judah by the same way you came. So God told him, use a different route. People of God, I'm going somewhere with this message. I want you to stay with me and listen. Hallelujah. So he left Bethel and went home another way. He was on his way home. It appeared that there was an old prophet living in that same town. There is an old prophet living in that same town where the king lives. Jesus. Somebody said, no, come stir up trouble. Something is about to happen. Because he went there and he, two miracles was performed. Matter of fact, the altar was open, number one, three miracles. Number two, the, 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 the ashes was poured. Number three, the king stretched forth his hand and it froze. Number four, he prayed to the Lord. He entreated the Lord for the king's hand and it was restored. So four miracles took place in a, in a short time. So now he said, I can't eat here. I can't drink here because the Lord told me, don't even come. He talked too much. Some of us as children of God, we talk too much. He told the king everything. He said, I'm not supposed to eat or drink and I'm not supposed to walk that way. We talk too much as children of God. We don't keep anything. Sometimes we, we, we receive a little information from the Lord and we begin to tell everybody. That's not how God works. When you receive a word from the Lord, keep quiet. When your testimony come, then you can share it because it's your testimony. But don't count the chicken before they are hatched. Oh, Jesus, I don't know who the Lord sent me here to, to throw some stones. I'm throwing some big stones today. Why? Because this right here. There's an act of disobedience and there's a, also an act of Jealousy. Listen, it happened there, an old prophet living in the same town of Bethel, and his sons came and told him what the man of God done at Bethel that day. Now, he is new to the town, and whatever happened, it began to spread. So now, the old prophet who didn't have any power who was not hearing from God the way he's supposed to? Because if he was hearing from God, God would not use another man of God from a different place to come to Bethel to fix the altar, to destroy that altar. We're talking. So this means God is bringing up a different nation of people who are radical in the spirit, who are obedient to God. Somebody say, I made that me chat too much. Well, me need to hear this. Thanks, mommy. <laughs> yes, sometimes we talk too much. We share, we give out too much information. And then the devil take it and run with it. So now this is what happened. Hear what it says. The whole man of God, the whole one, the whole prophet heard because his sons were out in the town. And you know, young people, nothing stays. They, they hear, they spread the news. It spread fast like wildfire. It just blow. Young people talk. We don't keep mouth shut. Hallelujah. The Bible said, they told their father. And the man said to the king, the old prophet asked them, which way did he go? Look, why are you going to ask that question? Which way did the prophet go? The devil is a liar. Anybody 
who is planning to destroy you or what God is doing in your life. Today we destroy them. We finish them. Today we finish them. No, this love about you see, people of God, listen. Listen. I want you to listen. I want you to focus on this message. I want when you share it, tell them you cannot kill me. You cannot stop me. You will never stop me. Mighty God. This is a word straight from God. The old prophet asked them, which way did he go? So they showed your father with the road the man of God took. They showed your father the road that the man of God had taken. Somebody go ahead and begin to share this message because it's serious. Because tomorrow we're going to continue it. It's a lot. He said, quickly saddle the donkey. And the old man said, so they saddled the donkey for him and he mounted. Look, you went and did the job that the Lord gave you. So now this was not of God. He saddled his donkey and mounted because he wanted to meet this prophet who did this thing. Because this prophet came to destroy sin. This prophet came to fix things in Bethel. But the old prophet in Bethel was jealous. He was upset. He was angry. He was mad. Because now somebody is messing in his business. Because he was territorial. He is That was his tone. He don't want nobody to come there to run it. And all this man did was what God said. He did not even go to the palace to eat. But yet, the devil is coming after him. Anything that is coming after you. Somebody declare this word. Anything that is coming after me, may the Lord stop them. Anything that, that is coming after me today, today by the blood of the Holy Ghost, I stop them right now. Today by the blood, by the blood, by the blood of Jesus Christ, we stop them right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, we stop them right now. Today we stop them. I'm reading the Bible, people of God, and I want you to understand Somebody go ahead and begin to share this broadcast. My God, Jesus. Bible said he mounted his donkey, meaning that he was trying to do his best to catch this man. Then he rode after the man of God and found him sitting under a great tree. My God. Yes, he caught him. Somebody say he caught him. Yeah, he caught him. And and in um, the King James Version, he said, and he went after the man of God and found him sitting under an oak tree. So the oak tree is a big tree because in the other version, it says a great tree. So he was, sit he was resting. All that work that he did, it was spiritual. Spiritual work makes you tired, physically tired because his spirit man was tired. You see, look, listen, people of God. When you are doing God's business, the devil will use people to come to you. And they came talking about they are prophets. They came in the name of Jesus to mess you up because this prophet did the work of God. So now the devil is coming to destroy this prophet. I don't know if anybody get this. I don't know if anybody get this, but anything that was said to destroy you, that is coming after you, today we stop it with the blood and the power of the Holy Ghost. My God. They, listen to this. The, the old prophet asked him, are you the man of God who came from Judah? So he was informed. He heard about him. And listen to this young prophet. Yes. Yes, he replied. Yes, I am. Then he said to the man of God, come home with me and eat some food. You see, God already gave him a word. Don't eat anything in Bethel. Don't drink water in Bethel. But no, because he said, listen to this. Come with me and drink some food. The man said, no, I cannot. He replied, I am not allowed to eat or drink anything here in this place. Anybody hear that? For the Lord gave me command. You, he talked too much. 
This was his problem. He talked too much. For the Lord gave me command. He said, you must not eat or drink anything while you are on, while you are there. And do not return. He, 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 he just give the devil everything he needed. Some of us, people try to set us up on phone. And they call us and have other people listening. They know they can't call us three-way anymore because the phones are so intelligent. This, these cell phones are intelligent. So they try to call you and, and, and have somebody else on some other phone. Let me share something with you. Anybody who is trying to set you up, today we destroy them. Anybody, this is the word of God. Anybody who is trying to set you up today, we destroy them right now. We destroy them. Sister Marcia Hines, anybody who is trying to set you up, today we destroy them. The man said, no, I cannot eat or drink because I receive command. You must not, you he talked too much. But he was young because the Bible said, this is an old prophet. So it means that the, the one that went to Bethel was younger. So the old man uses tactics. Oh God, I came to tell her, any whole bag, any whole prophet, any whole thief, any whole scammer, any old people coming at you to try you, may God give you wisdom to destroy them. He was an old prophet, meaning that the guy was a young prophet. Oh God. He, he, he was telling, telling the man everything that God tell him sh that he shouldn't do. You see? You see how crafty, the devil is very crafty. People of God, the devil is very crafty. You might have experience in some things and God is using you at the job. But there is a new supervisor that came and God is blessing this new supervisor. But because you have been there for so long, the devil will use you to destroy them. I'm here to let you, people of God, don't allow the devil to destroy you. Don't allow the devil to put anything in your head to, to, to work for him. You know, last night there was a woman of God. I was listening to her and she was saying, um, Egypt is in some people. Egypt is still controlling some people. It's in their body. And I'm saying, why would she say that? So I begin to listen because it was a clip somebody sent to me. She said, yes, because a doctor told a woman that her heart is black. When they ran the test, her heart was black. And um, the woman told her, and she went to pray for the woman, and she said, let me tell you something. I understand, but these doctors are professionals. So hear what the doctor say. And when the doctor leave, you turn to God and said, Lord, anything that make my heart black, move it now. And the next day they ran some more tests and her heart was good. So I'm here to let you know. Sometimes we heard something. And even though in the eyes of man it's true. But in the eyes of God it's the plan of the devil. So we have to. Don't fight these doctors. Don't fight these nurses. Just go to God with the problem. Just turn to God with the problem and leave it there. Don't call everybody and tell them. Turn to God. This is the thing we are doing nowadays. We talk too much. That is our problem. We talk. We spend too much time sharing everything with everybody. And it's costing us. Because listen what's going to happen. My God. The old prophet. The Bible said, but the old prophet answered. I am a prophet too. That right there. Who cares if he's a prophet? God already gave you instruction. Go ahead. You see? But I am a doctor too. But I am a scientist too. But I am a pastor too. But I am also a businessman. You see, people of God, listen to this. Don't worry about what other people are doing. Whatever God tell you to do, do it. Because the moment you begin to follow them because they are doing the same thing, you're getting into trouble with God. God didn't tell him that you're going to meet a prophet. That was not in the prophecy. So when this man come, you know it's not of God. Whether he was a prophet or not, God didn't show him anything. 
So all he needed to do was tell this man, get out of my way, rebuke him, and keep going. Listen what he listen what happened. The man said, I am a prophet too, just as you are. Misery love company. And an angel gave me this command from the Lord. You see, he's lying. But this is our problem. The angel did not give him no command. His children told him, and he went here to stop the man. People of God, I want you to get this revelation. Be quiet. Stop talking. This pandemic, this pandemic caused a lot of us to get into trouble. And it's our moat. Shut your moat. Oh God, Sister Anika said, I talk too much. <laughs> Help me to keep my mouth shut. Yes, you know there's a scripture in the book of Psalms. says, Lord, put a bridle on my mouth while the wicked is before me. It's scriptural. Lord, put a bridle on my mouth while the wicked is in front of me. The man gave out every secret to the old prophet. So he gave the old prophet advantage. Some people come and they said, the Lord said this. You see, now we, now we are proving and this is the Old Testament. This is from the days of old. It's been a long time people have been telling a lie on God. Right here, he said, I am a prophet too. As you are, and an angel of the he said, an angel gave me this command from the Lord, bring him home with you so he can have something to eat. That was a white lie. That was a big fat white lie. But the old man was lying to him. You see, we need the spirit of discernment. So when people come and they lie to us, God will say, no. We need to connect with the Holy Spirit. So when people are trying to play us, when people are trying to trick us, when people are trying to twist us, when people are trying to turn it around and talk about the Lord said, the Holy Spirit will intervene right there. Right there. God Almighty will show up on our behalf because people will come and lie about God. So right here he said, but the old man was lying. So he, he went back, they went back together. He fell for it. So God already give you an instruction. God already give you an instruction. He said, don't talk to nobody. He said, don't eat no food in, in Bethel. He said, don't drink no water in Bethel. You went and you did a job and it was performed instantly. It was a prophetic right there. Signs and wonders follow you. And you're going to let an old prophet trick you to eat? Listen to me. The Bible said, some of us, our belly is our God. We eat too much. Now I'm going to the food part. We eat too much. We are greedy. We are glutton. We need to stop it when people offer food. We need to keep moving. Some of us, when they have feasts, we need to go on fasting so we don't eat. My God. Some of us, we love our belly. That is our problem. We worship food. I don't know who I'm talking to right here. No condemnation here. But this was an act of disobedience. This prophet, this young prophet, God gave him specific instruction. But no, he became disobedient because this pastor, this prophet who was jealous. So we're talking about jealousy and disobedience. You see, jealousy and disobedience. The old prophet was jealous and the young prophet was disobedient. Let's see what's going to happen. But the old man was lying, so they went back together. And the man of God ate and drank at the prophet's home. Hey, hey. 
God said, don't drink nothing in Bethel. God said, don't eat nothing in Bethel. God said, don't sleep with nobody in Bethel. God said, don't marry nobody in Bethel. God said, don't work in that town. But yet, you find a job there. God never send you there to stay. God send you to uh, as a messenger and leave. And you're going to open up house. You're trying to establish yourself in a place where God didn't give you establishment. So how are you going to do things right? God did not tell you to go to Connecticut, but you end up in Connecticut and trying to take up residence. You will be hurt. Your feelings will be hurt. God did not say move to New York or move to Florida, but you found yourself in Florida. How are you going to make it? God did not say go. So you're on your own. Tell somebody you're on your own. Tell somebody you are on your own because of disobedience. Yes disobedience and jealousy because this man offer your food because he was jealous he said come to my house god never tell you to, you didn't want to go to the palace but you're going with the prophet listen to me people of god it's time for us to be obedient to god it's time for us to be obedient to god hallelujah jesus it's time for us to be obedient to God. Jesus. Oh God. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. But I'm sure bringing the word. You know why? Because many of you here today needed to hear this. Some of you here today, you needed this word. Because you didn't say it yet. You were about to spill the beans. You were about to spill the beans. The prophetic beans. Tell somebody, don't spill those beans. Hallelujah. Jesus, listen to me, people of God. You see, if we only follow the word of God, we will be in good standing. But we are, we are in the presence of God and we leave because somebody tried to, you see, the devil will use people to destroy you. It doesn't matter what you know. Because the moment they say, God said this, you're going to jump to it. You know how many people was robbed? How many people were, were scammed out of millions of dollars because of a false prophet? Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm not going there today. I am not going there today because this old prophet was a false prophet. He was a false prophet. This old man... Don't let nobody fool you. Don't let nobody twist you. Don't let nobody turn you. You know, God has been blessing you and you're, 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 you're going to a particular ministry and everything is going well with you and your God. And the moment somebody lied to you and told you otherwise, opposing what God said, but they are using the name of God and then you begin to have problems. Who would you blame? You can't blame God because God already given us specific instructions. Hallelujah. He already given us specific instructions to obey, to follow. Jesus. My God. Hallelujah. God already given us specific instructions to follow. But we are so jumpy. Look at them. Tell somebody, look at them. Who can, listen, when God speak, he confirms. And when God, if God is using you, and you allow the devil to come and rob you, you're on your own. You're on your own. If you're here for the first time, welcome. Welcome. Welcome to Breakfast with Jesus. If you're here for the first time, today is day four of our journey. Hallelujah. Jesus, don't allow the devil to destroy you. Don't allow the devil to snatch you. Don't allow the devil to brainwash you, mighty God. Don't allow the devil to overpower you. You know the word of God. You know the word of God. He said, my sheep know my voice. Hallelujah. He said, my sheep know my voice. Jesus. My sheep knows my voice. 
Jesus, I, I came to talk to some people here today. You might be here for the first time. You wonder, who is this woman? My name is Reverend Joycelyn Radigan. Yes. So if it's your first time, welcome. I know a lot of people are watching from the other side, but I came to let you know today, grab your pen and your paper and take notes. We are in the book of First Kings chapter 13. People of God, we have been dealing for far too long with envy and jealousy and disobedience. And it caused us to sin. The Bible reminds us that disobedience is worse than witchcraft. So some people have been disobedient and when things happen, they say somebody put obia. No! Your disobedience will, uh, will destroy you. Jesus. Your disobedience will destroy you. Your disobedience will destroy you. My God. Mighty God. Jesus. Disobedience can cause you to sin. Disobedience can cause you to have to pack up and move out of town. Yes. Disobedience can cause you to move out of town. Disobedience can cause you to lose your life. Disobedience can cause you to lose friends. My God. My God. Disobedience can cause you to be sick. Yes. My God. Jesus. This is why today's topic is about disobedience and jealousy. Hmm. Disobedience and jealousy. You might be doing good at your job. And the moment things begin to turn in your favor, then everything fall apart. Because you did not know that you were dealing with jealousy all this time. This man has never experienced nothing like this. So he fell for it because he was a young prophet. Listen to the voice of God. Be obedient to the voice of God. Don't let nobody trick you. Study the word of God. Believe the word of God. It doesn't matter what nobody said to you. Believe the word of God. Somebody said this is a confirmation. Believe the word of God. My God. The Bible said, he eat and drink at the prophet's home. Then while they were sitting at the table, a command from the Lord came to the old prophet. You see? So no, God is giving him a command. The old prophet. Hmm. He cried out to the man of God from Judah. This is what the Lord says. You have defied Jesus. You have defied the word of God. And have disobeyed the command of the, the Lord your God. Gave the command your... <laughs> Jesus. He, let me read it again. This is what the word of the Lord says. You have defied the word of the Lord and have disobeyed the command of the Lord your God gave you. You came back to this place and ate and drank where, where he told you not to eat or drink. Because of, your, because of this, your body will not be buried in the grave of your ancestors. So now God release the word to the old man of God to pronounce death upon the young man of God. You see? You see what happened? That was a curse. He went to the old prophet's house and ate. But it was a blessing to the old prophet. Be careful who you eat and drink with. It was a blessing. Him being in that old prophet's house was a blessing 